A massive thank you to It's The Call, Mark, Nathaniel, Dewald, and K Davis for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 10 of season 7 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we head to the Austrian Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on that video that went live over the weekend uh, from Circuit Paul Ricard, definitely, definitely recommend uh, going back and checking that one out. So far, Season 7 has been absolutely wild uh, in the My Team career mode, and I cannot thank you guys enough uh, for the continued support as well. Though We've now smashed through 46,000 subscribers, less than 4,000 to go uh, before our target of trying to hit 50k before F1 2022 releases at the end of next month. So, you know, if you're not already, please do get yourself subscribed as well for daily Formula 1 content. But that is your warning for spoilers then. Championship-wise, things really, really heating up at the front of the table there. We now have a 35-point lead over George Russell in the Drivers' Championship. However, Red Bull still lead the way constructors-wise, 12 points clear as we head into the Austrian GP weekend. Verstappen is still sat in 8th overall in the Drivers' Championship, over 100 points behind me. However... This has been a track where the Dutchman has been incredibly strong at in the past. So fingers crossed this weekend he can finally sort of get his act together. Of course, we've now had seven different winners so far this year. Uh, I mean, we've had myself, we've had both Red Bulls, Charles Leclerc's taking a win, Lando Norris has had a win... Both Mercedes have had a win, and Daniel Ricciardo. It has just been insane uh, to kick off this new year there. Sorry, um, no, Yuki Tsunoda is yet to win a race, sorry, in this campaign. But, yes, yeah, so much crazy action has kicked off early in the year. Will we see an eighth winner this weekend? Can Verstappen pull his finger out? Only one way to find out. Let's get into the Austrian GP. Formula One is finally back in 2022, and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store... Every team now has merch lineups available, whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. Well, the hills are certainly alive with the sound of V6 turbo hybrids once more. Back at the Austrian Grand Prix, I love the venue around this circuit just so much atmosphere around this track as well there and honestly yeah the red bull ring i think becoming one of my favorite tracks on the f1 calendar as well f1 2021 it can be a little bit wild just due to the nature of the ai trying to get into the pit lane but at the final corner ers program that's going to be perfect i guess this weekend as well could also be the first real test we see of whether you know verstappen's dominance around this circuit has been because of him or because of the car in the past as we head up towards the top of the hill though. Car looking quick, feeling quick so far in at free practice. We can try and get another purple score. I could walk into qualifying feeling pretty confident there. It's 211 miles an hour through the speed trap and that's not even the fastest part of the circuit. Bit of a ragged run out of the final corner. But it's going to be a 101-6. And, well and that's going to be a purple score there. A couple of tenths so away from Sergio Perez but it wasn't the perfect lap. Let's get into qualifying then here. Are we going to see any sub one minute laps? Right, well here we are then, qualifying day back at the Red Bull Ring. And of course, yeah, shortest track in both time and pretty much distance. Tightest ever field we've ever had in Formula 1 in this career mode. We're really going to have to nail laps here. Otherwise, that could be the difference between really genuinely pole position and by getting out of Q2. That's how close the field spread is at this stage of the campaign there, especially around a track like this as we head up the hill. First sector was pretty good. It's all trying to get on the power super early at the top of the hill there. Having to short shift all the way into fifth gear there as Sergio Perez immediately sets the benchmark on a 101-1. We're just trying to get our first lap in using the same set of tyres I used at the end of Q1 there as Bottas now goes marginally faster in his McLaren. Don't often see that from McLaren in this career mode or at least in more recent seasons as there goes Verstappen. They're just going a tenth faster than at Bottas. First time, I'm not expecting this one to be particularly groundbreaking. As long as we're sort of within a couple of tenths, I'd probably be quite happy there as attack the curbs. 
through the final corner, up towards the start finish line. And it is, yeah, about a tenth away there, but Verstappen's done that lap on mediums. So fair play to our teammate there as Ricardo now dips into the one minute flats there. Perez is well behind us, also on mediums, so we're not exactly where I wanted as George Russell now goes fastest. So often as we've seen before here in Austria, the track just getting a little bit overcast, so we might see some changeable conditions by the time we get into Q3 here. Give myself enough time if we have to go for a third run, we can. But ideally, yeah, I want to set a good time now, sort of down on those one minute flats. But hopefully see us through into final qualifying. There is our big, big over rotation from the rear end. Somehow managed to get it sort of planted on the exit curve there, and we don't loop it round as we head up towards the top of the hill. Missing our breaking point there, though, rather badly, and that's going to be that lap gone before it's really started. I guess the good thing with Austria being such a short lap is, you know, we can actually just afford to bail out of that one and go again as we head at the final corner. Need to get a tidier run through turn one, and don't be so brave on the brakes down towards turn two. There is tipping in through the first corner, try and get on the power nice and early, and that We're time round. Rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Team, uh, team still recommending rain in about 10-15 minutes there as we head up towards the top of the hill. Just so I get it slowed down on the apex there and then get a really nice throttle on the exit. So now we're going to be upwards of a tenth up as we head down the other side there. But it doesn't look like rain's going to affect the end of Q2 running. So we're just trying to keep it tidy down the hill there. Don't want to do anything stupid now. Uh, we're finding time. Like I said, I want to try and make it through on this set of tyres, if we possibly can. There is really opening up track width as best as possible. There, purple through the middle sector, and now we're two tenths up as we head down in towards the final corner then. Just got to keep it clean and tidy. Down the one gear through the first part, and then down two more through the second. Use all the curbing on the exit there, allowing us to get away with that. And there we go, up into P4 on a 108 flat there. Red sector one, purple sector two, and a green sector three. It was a lap full of differencing of opinions but we do go p4 and that i'm hoping will see us through and there we go then at the end of q2 we do just about squeeze through there but russell set that one minute flat on a set of medium tires there so he's going to be starting the grand prix on the medium tires that might open up very strategy for him later on there stroll fast is ahead of norris and perez there as verstappen finally showing the pace we'd expect from him but we were less than a tenth away of going out in Q2. Can we try and get a good lap though down in Q3? We're going to get two bites at this, so let's try and get it. And look at this then as we head out of the paddock in... Out of the paddock? Out of the pit lane even, I should say. Ready to start Q3 then. The rain has started to pour here in Austria. So we now have only got one real shot on this dry compound of tyres there. And it looks like one of the McLarens... He's going to be the first car out onto a lap, so maybe they'll have a bit of an advantage here. But I don't know why everyone isn't just peeling out of the pits immediately here. Because it is going to be a race against the weather now. Unless, of course, I don't think the track's going to dry up later on in qualifying. We need to get this first lap dialed in on the set of dries. Just trying to just get heat into the rubber as we head down in towards the final couple of corners then. Rip is already definitely at a bit of a premium there as we take way too much curb through the final corner. Well, like I said, this is effectively now a one-shot qualifying session here in Austria as we head up into T1. Not a bad line through the first corner there as we try and get the power down on the exit. It's that horrible balance between trying to risk it because, you know, you could easily be right at the front of the field. But don't want to throw it all away as Charles Leclerc at the top of the hill there. Just getting in the way a little bit in his Ferrari. Don't know if he's going to try and move out of the way some point sooner rather than later. We're definitely... On an attacking lap, and Charles Leclerc definitely isn't. Just come on, Charles, get out of the way, man, please. There we go, Ferrari moves off the line, thank you. As we now head down the hill. It's not going to be my best lap in the world, but hopefully it'll be a quick enough lap nonetheless there, as it's really just a case of what can George Russell do in that Red Bull. Is down in towards the final couple of corners. Don't know which McLaren it is, but they could well be on pole position here as we head through the final corner. It is Daniel Ricciardo who sets a 101.9 and we go just a tenth away there. But it isn't pole position at the moment and now everyone else is going to try and get one run in as Verstappen does a 101.8 and Stroll does a 101.5. So times aren't dropping off that badly but the rain is definitely getting worse. 
Matt Stroll has certainly had an impressive run of form over the last couple of race weekends there. It's another pole position for the Canadian there. Sergio Perez P2 ahead of Max Verstappen in P3 there. And then Lando Norris just, uh, what, 12 thousandths away from our teammate. We can only muster up P7 in the end, but we are still ahead of our big title rival, George Russell. He's going to be starting on mediums, though, which could spice things up in the Grand Prix. Let's get into it then here from Austria. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Welcome to the beautiful Styrian Mountains for another chapter in the story of the Austrian Grand Prix. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 meters above sea level with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into Turn 1 or the tight uphill Turn 3. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today for the midfield teams, all trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lance Stroll lines up on pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Ricardo, Mr. Monaco, Leclerc, Russell, and Yuki Tsunoda, Joe, Sainz, Valtteri Bottas, and Lundgaard. Aitken, Mick Schumacher, Nikita Mazepin, and Callum Eilert. Ocon, Latifi, Giotto, and Robert Schwartzman. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Right, here we are then, ready on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix. Looks like it's going to be a nice sunny affair here today when we get down to the racing. But in terms of strategy then, George Russell, of course, is probably the big one we're worried about today. I think, to be honest, we might have to see if we can try and cover him off there. Go soft medium and then hopefully remove the stint. Game does reckon it's possible, so that's exactly what we're going to be going with then. 15 laps on the softs, although, no, they weren't the ones that we had to use in Q3. Uh, but we did do two laps on him in Q2 there, which might compromise us slightly. And then 19 laps on mediums to hopefully see us through to the end of the race. But we've got a bit of a mixed up grid. I say that, of course, so many cars are so closely paced nowadays that it doesn't really feel like a mixed up grid. It's kind of just one car's working around a certain venue. But ready then here for the Austrian Grand Prix. Round 10 of a 23 rounds campaign. Five red lights and he's lights out. And away we go. And just struggling a little bit there as Charles Leclerc and George Russell try and get a good run down towards turn one. We're just going to stay on the outside there. I can hear plenty of contact on the inside as we just bang wheels slightly with Sonoda as we head up the hill then. Really not the best start though in the world. As now Sainz and Zhou Guan Yu are both going to look for it and I just can't do anything right early on in this GP. Their yellow flag's out and now the green flag's going to be away. So we are going to try and put the power down 
up the inside of Yuki Sonoda. Going to turn to the outside, though, as we head down the hill and try and just box him in behind Zhou Guan Yu there. So down to 11th then off the start of the Grand Prix, just through AI being super aggressive. Just did not want to risk the car early on in this race. Now we've got a 35-point lead over George Russell after his retirement last weekend in the French Grand Prix. And of course, yeah, Austria, like I said, in qualifying can be a bit crazy as well there uh, with the AI's ability to navigate into the pit lane. Sonoda thought about it up the inside of the final corner there. I forgot the AI can still be a bit OP through that final turn, but we do hang on to P11 for now. And end of lap one then, it is still Lance Stroll that leads the way. Could he make it two race victories in a row and maybe now try and push himself towards a title campaign? Can we have a look up the inside of Sun... Uh, sorry, Zhou Guan Yu. Yes, we can. Up the inside we go. And now back up into the points, at least. It looks already like on just lap three of the Grand Prix, Antonio Giovinazzi causing a little bit of a train there as we get all over the back of our title rival, George Russell, at the top of the hill. We seem to be very, very confident on the brakes up in towards what I dub fake turn three in this Grand Prix. But can we have a look now at the inside? Of course, George still on those harder tyres. So grip will come at a premium, and we do make the move work there. Back up to P9 then, and a big, big move early on in this Grand Prix. But we just need to try and recover spots early on here and get back up, you know, at least us up the top five ahead of this train of cars. As that could have been GG on just lap three. Lap five then, slowly closing up to the back of both Ferraris here in this GP, and actually getting a really nice run out of turn one. Might be able to now apply some pressure to the Spaniard, Carlos Sainz, as he's going to go defensive up the hill there. Ricardo and Gio also trying to trade places. We end up having a look around the outside of Charles Leclerc there. Three wide on the exit as we almost loop it by myself into both of them. As now we're going to try and get a run there. Didn't actually realise there was contact with Charles Leclerc. As Danny Rick tries to have a look around the outside of Gio. We use all the curb though on both the entry and the exit as we're still side by side with the Monegas driver there. That time round... We definitely made contact, and in the end, Charles Leclerc just slamming the door on me. That got a little bit close for comfort, but love that sort of racing on this game. As we're going to try and go for it again, though, out of turn one. Ricardo, is he going to apply some pressure to Antonio Giovinazzi? As Leclerc again goes defensive. Ricardo breaks early, though, and now we are almost three wide again, then. As we head up the hill. Oh, back end trying to wriggle around in fifth, sixth gear there, and again, didn't realise we made contact with Ricardo. Must have barely just skimmed him as we tried to go up the hill there, and Charles Leclerc again, though, is able to hang on down the other side. It's difficult racing early on. We just need Ricardo to try and make a move on Gio, and then hopefully, and I mean, he's not sat in the way, but I can break so late around the outside of Charles Leclerc. Right, come on then, Charles, I've got to try and get to the inside of the Ferrari this time, and look at that, trips up over the curbing on the exit, and this will allow us a monstrous run as we head up the hill there. Charles Leclerc has already been disposed of, and now we're going to have a look up the inside of Daniel Ricciardo as well there. Late break in the Australian, and that's two positions in one go there. Can we make it three? Can we get a run on Giovinazzi, who seems to be struggling a little bit more in his Alpine? No, not... Well, I'm brave, but I wouldn't... Hopefully I wouldn't call myself stupid. Not, not all the time on F1. Right, start lap 8 then. Getting a nice run actually on Gio back down towards someone, but this is not where I want to make the move. I'd rather try and get a nice run off corner exit, and there we go immediately. Bit of a snag of oversteer. So we try and put the power down, but the car grips up so quickly in this series. There, Gio tries to force me. Ooh, where there on earth am I off at the top of the hill? We actually make a hash of that one. Just get back on the circuit ahead of the Alpine, but he's now going to have the DRS though. We head down the other side there, and Giovinazzi makes the move work. We are, though, going to go back to the inside. The is available on the MFD. And force him into submission that time round. New strategy for the team. They want us just to go one that longer. So I'm guessing Verstappen has been on the radio talking about strats. And now we've got a bit of clean air. The car ahead is 5.9 seconds. A lot of frantic racing early on here, but as we cross towards one quarter's distance, in this cross I can just get my head down and hit some laps. There we go, Ricardo and Gio into the pits then at just the end of lap 9. So they are likely to stopping then. I guess the real question today is, of course, when will we see a safety car? It's not really a question of if around Austria, it's more a case of when. As we're not really taking any time out the cars in front either. They're just kind of dragging each other along in the DRS. 
Well, a few more laps slowly ticking We're by. The pit window. You'll be on the mediums. So you can just confirm that we'll be on the mediums when we box, but at the moment, gaps just aren't moving in front of us. The gaps pretty much stay level between 6.3 and 6.4 to Lando Norris up the road there. We are pulling away from the Ferraris behind, which I guess is reassuring. But yeah, really just sort of pushing myself into no man's land in this Grand Prix. Like I said, maybe we'll start seeing some craziness when more cars pit, but it's looking like more and more cars are, and just nothing's happening because of it. Gotta be honest, kind of now hoping Verstappen doesn't pit this lap, because these tyres are definitely getting towards the end of their usable life there, and I really don't fancy trying to hang out on them Our all too much longer. Is seconds. Saying that, I'm sure Verstappen will be in at the end of this lap, just like that whole train of cars at the front. There we go, Verstappen in to the pit lane. In for stop. So we are going to inherit the lead then of the Grand Prix, albeit briefly. But yeah, just really feel like these tyres are starting to give We're up the ghost. This lap. Give us the best in lap you can. We had to communicate there because Verstappen has got a good chance at the win today. And at the end of lap 16 then, going to dive the car into the pit lane ourselves then in this Grand Prix. Still no cars around us, so going to be a little bit cheeky on pit entrance. Can we get the car slowed down? Yes, we can. Just in the nick of time there, ready for the 50, uh, sorry, yeah, 50 mile an hour board. It is around the Austrian Grand Prix, but there goes the front four then. Sergio Perez still leads the way ahead of Stroll, Verstappen and Lando Norris. Go, go, go. Oh, come on. That could have been a really good stop there, but it is only a 2.3 when all is said and done. We want to finish the race on this compound. So no idea what George Russell's doing in terms of strategy and how on earth have all those AI just pulled another two seconds on me over the pit stop window. Ricardo is now a whole lot closer as well, so clearly going longer has not worked out for me. And I mean, we won't have surely much of a pace advantage later on in the afternoon. But now, yeah, it could be a long old second half to this Grand Prix. But more weirdly, George Russell, he's in the pits again there. So I reckon he's had contact with someone. And now George Russell... For the second race in a row, might not be able to score points. And though Norris, it's a 103... Oh, sorry, a 102.3 there. We take way too much curb through the final corner. Where and still only manage a 2.7. We start prioritising our reserves. What we need is Stroll and Perez to start actually battling here. But it just seems like that Red Bull has got enough top end there. Ricardo and Leclerc not as fast behind. We really could be in here for a very, very lonely second half of this race. 9.2 seconds. This is sort of what you find at Austria sometimes. The slipstream around here is so powerful with the DRS. You know, those three DRS zones in a row that effectively we're racing Perez and that Red Bull is fast. Okay, Great there we work. go. That's a new fastest lap of the race. So it felt like a quick lap, but I wasn't expecting it to be that fast there. And now, maybe this isn't over just yet. Maybe we can start closing the gap up to the cars in front, but it is still a very, very tall order. Oh, safety car! An incident which has resulted in lots of loose debris on the track. The safety car is being deployed. Well, there seems to have been something gone on down the bottom of the hill there. I think one of the Haas cars has gone round and caused a bit of a roadblock. So that's given us a lifeline then in this GP. I reckon we got to take the risk here. You know, we're not really going to throw away much if we don't pit. I'm going to go on to a fresh set of soft compound tyres to see us through to the end of the race. Just wondered them for a second whether there was some rain on the circuit. But there's all kinds of carnage going on down at the final corner. I'm guessing a couple of people have lost front wings. But none of the top guys are going to pit okay, slow either. Down, slow down. So we yeah, are going to make the negative, call which means you and dive into fast. the pits Reduce at the pace. end of this lap there. Fingers crossed the delta will go away. Let's get far enough into the pit lane. Oh, what's going on? There's cars just slow in the lane there. We're accidentally going to overtake like four cars. As I've got no idea what is happening at the moment there, but looks like we are the only driver that is taking this risk then in this Grand Prix. Hopefully we'll just get in ahead of that Alpha Tower. Oh, sorry, the Williams even, I should say. And we'll actually come out right behind him as well. So where are we going to re-emerge then in this Grand Prix? We're going to come back out in P10. But now we've got a lot of cars a lap down, and suddenly this race just got a whole lot more interesting. Oh, as now we've got someone pulling over there. Carlos Sainz, I think he's going to be out of the Grand Prix there, so that's going to put us back up into P9 then, and one less car we've got to try and navigate. Sainz out here in Austria. Right, well, safety car in then at the end of this lap, and Sergio Perez is not giving the safety car much room, which might trip himself up a bit, but we've now got to try and get around Calamai lot and really push 
in the final 11 laps then of this Grand Prix because anything now is going to be possible. There's a little bit of Constantino and up through the final corner. We need to try and get past Eilat as soon as possible here. And he's just going to lift out over the start-finish line there. So good job done by the Williams man. We've got plenty of lap cars between us and the guys behind. And look at that immediately. The grip we've got over the likes of Valtteri Bottas as we head out of Turn 1 there. The McLaren though very, very quick as we head up the hill. But up the inside we go. Just try and get it slowed down nicely parked on the apex. And then just squeeze him out on corner exit. Not willing to give anyone an inch in the second half of this Grand Prix because like I said we might be able to really clutch up a result I never expected here next up Sonoda oh we got more yellow flags out someone behind us has gone round it is Bottas no it's not it's Ricardo. by the looks of it he's out now of the Grand Prix and we're not going to see another safety car which to be honest I'm not going to moan about there is look at that the grip we got over Sonoda at turn track, one but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now just be careful just try and squeeze him out through turn two and up the hill there means we might now be able to line up a move on Zhou Guan Yu as we try and put the power down up the top of the hill there the Alpha Tari though again not a slow car on F1 at 2021 there and we're gonna have a look up the inside of Zhou Guan Yu and we're pretty much gonna be back to where we were before this safety car so definitely has been a risk worth paying or worth taking at the moment we just got to navigate Charles Leclerc and then we'll effectively have not lost anything by doing this anything after that is just gains DRS now back online and is look at this out of turn one there almost launching ourselves into the Charles Leclerc's gearbox on the exit of the corner there but so much overspeed as we head up the hill we've just got so much more grip than everyone else at the moment I'm amazed no one else inside the top 10 opted to make the gamble here because it's not a difficult track to overtake on you've just got to be able to have the grip and get the run up the hill there thought about making our second move on an Alpha Tauri into that corner in two laps but thought better of it but we need to get around Norris and Verstappen because Stroll and Perez are starting to run away a bit. It's getting a really nice run on the exit of the corner there. Down in towards the final two turns we go. Can we hook it up around the outside of Lando Norris? Yes! Somehow we can there and that was not a move I expected to make. Run a little bit wide out of the final corner. But now Norris is going to be under pressure from Charles Leclerc. And we're going to get the DRS on our teammate Max Verstappen as we head back down towards turn one. Fingers crossed the team have told him, you know, just don't fight us at the moment. If I can't get the top two, I'll happily give him the place back there as we head up the hill. Storming around the outside of our teammate Max Verstappen. And now a bit of P3 of the Grand Prix we go. Purple Sector 1 as well. Perez and Stroll just a second away. This race has suddenly very much flipped in our favour now getting the DRS on the top two and a 101.6 less than a second off what we were able to do in qualifying they're actually faster than my qualifying three time but seven laps to go then here of the Austrian Grand Prix and we are now breathing down the neck of the top two in this race surely Ooh, stroll very very early on the brakes there at the top of the hill didn't want to run into the back of Perez himself by the looks of it and despite almost putting ourselves out of the Grand Prix we're still gonna get a run on Sir Lance as we head down the other side there. Up the inside we go. And we've just got so much more grip at the moment. Stroll never stood a chance there. Trying to force me to the inside, even on the marbles. But he can still break so much later than the Merc. Now, Sergio Perez. Often Red Bull saw Verstappen winning this Grand Prix for them. And what effectively is their home GP. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Ah, so that might have been why Stroll was struggling then. But now, Perez... Red Bull's only hope in this race, and hopefully I'm about to crush that small sense of belief. It's gaining, gaining, gaining on Checo as we head up the hill there, and you can just see how much earlier the Red Bull's having a break than myself. Can we put the power down on the exit, activate the ZRS once more, and surely this is a foregone conclusion at the moment. Perez, you go defensive all you like, mate. We're going to just outbreak you down around the outside into the next corner there, and now up into the lead. Nice of the Austrian Grand Prix there. If you told me this 10 laps ago, I would never have believed you. We were just sat in no man's land for so much of this Grand Prix. But a late safety car, a big gamble from us, has absolutely paid off. Three laps to go then of the Austrian Grand Prix. And now we've got Perez at the critical one second zone in this GP. So now hopefully, I mean, we can't take it easy to the end. Sergio Perez is still a very, very fast racer in a very, very fast car. But it just makes our day a little less stressful, I suppose. 
Well, about to start then the final lap of this Austrian Grand Prix there. We're not going to see an eighth different winner this season. Final lap, final lap of the race. But we are going to hold on to our crown as the only repeat winner so far of the year there. George Russell and, of course, so many others have had one win apiece so far. And it looks like, unless we do something stupid, we're going to make it our fourth win in just ten races here. I don't really think we've ever had this strong a start to a season on F1 2021 here. But I am all for it at the moment, just trying to build up a gap in case things go pear-shaped later on in the year there. And George Russell... He had a nightmare last time around at Paul Ricard and has had no much better luck today. I think he is back in the points, but I think he's only floating around towards the rear end of the top ten there. Or was that just him losing a place? No, he's actually battling one of the Alfa Romeos there. I think that is the battle for tenth in this Grand Prix. But as we head down in towards the final couple of corners then, it was victory in Bahrain to kickstart the year. Then, of course, Monaco and Azerbaijan. And we come through the final couple of corners to win at the Red Bull ring once more there. Just hurt Red Bull a little bit. Fantastic drive. Just fantastic. You deserve that race win. A fantastic team effort to secure victory here in the Styrian Alps. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. Now, let's discuss, Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The owner-driver's team moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula 1. Well, there we are then, guys. From 7th on the grid, it is victory here at the Red Bull Ring. Absolutely love that. The two-stop strategy, I'm not going to deny. We got very, very lucky today. But sometimes, you know, you've got to take that big strategy gamble. And it absolutely paid off there. Fastest lap as well means we walk away with the 26 points there ahead of Sergio Perez there. And Verstappen, for the first time in a long time, actually getting a podium in this season as well. They're up in P3. Charles Leclerc for the head of Norris, Sonoda, Zhou Guan Yu, Stroll, Bottas and Antonio Giovinazzi rounding out the top 10 there. So George Russell didn't even score a point for the second weekend in a row there. Jack Aitken just behind him. And then you can see a few cars a lap down there with just Ricardo and Sainz not making it through to the chequered flag there. Means championship-wise, suddenly now, the gap 61 points at the top of the table there. George Russell still P2, just 10 points ahead of his teammate Sergio Perez. And Charles Leclerc, like I said, super consistent this year. Now just 22 points back behind George Russell there. Lando Norris still in fifth place. There, Sonoda and Stroll still just ahead of Verstappen, who is slowly making gains back towards where he should be in this championship. No other movers, though, in the Drivers' Championship. Constructors-wise, though, for the first time in a long time, we take the lead at the top of the Constructors' Championship. 11 points clear of Red Bull as we head out of their home Grand Prix there. That is certainly going to hurt that team. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we'll be back very, very soon with more F1 2021 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.